السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this blessed day, the Friday, the best day of the week. We thank Allah for giving it to us. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us and accepting us to come to his house early and to be here to listen to a few words that inshallah would be of impact firstly for the speaker and then for everyone who is going to hear it. Ameen. We also send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his household, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them and to bless every single one of us and our offspring to come to the day and up to the day of Qiyamah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, a question I have for you. Do you feel the love for one another or do you not feel it? That's the question. Do you feel a connection with myself or do you not feel it? Do I feel a connection with you or do I not feel it? The answer for that question would help us knowing what type of Muslimin we are. The answer for that question will help us know the condition of our hearts. The answer for that question will help us realize whether or not we are preparing ourselves correctly for the Akhirah. So it is important we look into that question constantly. We will always have differences just like husband and wife have so many differences. But that does not mean we lose the love for one another, the feeling for one another, the fact that we are not only part of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but in today's case, probably related somehow, subhanallah. And amongst us seated here, even more closely related, we are part of one little community within the Ummah. We meet each other on a daily basis. We see each other regularly. We come to the masjid. We, our children perhaps go to school together. And yet if we don't feel that we are part and parcel of this huge family who is supposed to be concerned for one another, then we have a lot to improve on. And this is why, brothers and sisters, we have opportunities every week to listen. The ulama of our own communities are busy disseminating good teachings. Are we there? Do we make use of it? Do we benefit from the scholars within our own midst? Do we realize their value? Do we respect them? Perhaps they may make an error or two because they are human beings. But do we take the goodness like Imam Malik ibn Anas? Rahimahullah, one of the four great Imams, when he was seated in front of the Rawdah in Medina Munawwara, he was known as Imam Udar al Hijrah, Imam of Medina Munawwara, because that's where he was based mostly. And he pointed at the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ma min ahadin illa wa yu'khadu min kalamihi wa yuraddu illa sahiba hadha al qabr. He says, There is no body on earth except you have to take some of what they say and you have to leave some of what they say. Besides the man who is here pointing at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we cannot say, oh, I'll take something and I'll leave something. Subhanallah. But when it comes to everyone and anyone else like myself and yourselves, perhaps there may be one or two things or a few more sometimes that you may not like or you may disagree with or it might not be to your palatability and so on. But it would be important that you take the goodness. All of us have a lot to offer. Today, if you have a business and a man belonging to a totally different faith had to walk in and tell you, I'd like to buy worth 40,000 pounds all at once, what will happen? You might close the doors, you'll offer him tea, you'll offer him a drink, a meal, you might smile at him, but he does not belong to your faith. Subhanallah. Yes, you are supposed to be good and kind to all. But when someone is part and parcel of the ummah, you will have less differences. But shaitan comes and starts making us think and feel within each other that you know what, this man is bad, this woman is bad, this person is out, that person is not yet a good Muslim, this one because they don't have a beard, they are like this. Everyone has their weaknesses. Remember, we all have had hidayah and guidance at a certain time in our lives, some early and some a little bit late. So people can sometimes be misguided for 60 years, 65 years. 
and a moment before their death, they can become bigger saints than people who were guided for 60, 65 years, who then made a big mistake, which resulted in the, them seeing their end on the wrong foot. May Allah protect us. We don't want that to happen to us. So let's learn to love one another. I'd like to spend the next few moments speaking about something extremely important. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Rahman, and I'm sure we love the verses of Surah Al-Rahman because of the repetition of Which is it of the favors of your Lord do you deny, O man, O jinn? Allah has favored us so much. Today we are seated here. We are blessed. We have peace. We have stability. We have a plate of food. We have clothing. We have warmth. Subhanallah. What don't we have? Look at the people across the globe. All you need to do is just to take a peep at what has happened to people who were in so much peace and stability not long ago. And suddenly their world has turned upside down. Yet we are seated here and alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have so much goodness. So Allah says, which is it of the favors of your Lord? Do you deny? And then in Surah Ar-Rahman, he says, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Is the recompense of goodness anything besides goodness? Question. Someone does good to you. Someone has benefited you. Someone has benefited your children. Someone has benefited your family, your community. Someone has done good kindness to you, whether it is in terms of business or whatever else. Perhaps a doctor, perhaps an accountant, perhaps a person who is of a totally different field who's helped you. Perhaps someone on the road whom you did not know. How do you recompense goodness? That's a question you need to ask yourself. Firstly, to recompense goodness, you need to recognize the goodness. You need to understand goodness. So we need to spend a moment on a daily basis asking ourselves, who has done good to me today? It starts off with Allah. Allah is the one who ultimately does all good. So in return, what have I done? Allah says, is the favor of returning goodness anything besides goodness? How can we return a favor of goodness with evil? Allah has given you your life, He gives you your breath, He gives you your, your sustenance, He gives you everything. It may not be an amount that your heart desires, but it's an amount that Allah knows it's enough for you, it's right for you. Sometimes we are struggling, we are paying our debts, we are doing this, doing that. Allah knows, He wants that to be kept for us because it keeps us on the musalla, it keeps us in salah. But the minute you suddenly become a multi-millionaire, you've paid up all your debts, we don't want shaitan to grab hold of us and send us to the casino. Allah protect us. And this is why Allah says, He knows how much He's released. Allah's goodness upon us and His favors are immeasurable. In another place in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ If you are to try and count the favors of Allah upon you, you will never be able to do that. You will never be able to count the favors of Allah upon you. Never. And Allah says, indeed, man is not only oppressive, but very ungrateful, ingratitude. So, if you were to sit on a daily basis, and I invite you to do this as a Muslim, to ask yourself, who has done good upon me today? Subhanallah. Your first answer would be Allah. In return, what have I done? Have I read my salah? Have I fulfilled my duties? Have I stopped and protected myself from haram? Because to protect yourself from haram, knowing that it is accessible to you, is a great way of thanking Allah. Great way of thanking Allah to stop yourself. You know, something haram that is easily accessible and you, you stay away from it. That is a sign. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fulfill our duties. We are showing gratitude to Allah. Stay away from prohibitions. We are showing gratitude to Allah. And on top of that, praise Allah even by tongue. Ya Allah, I thank you. Alhamdulillah. Shukru lillah. Laka alhamdu wa laka shukru. Ya wajidu jalla jalaluk. What a dua. Subhanallah. We, are, we thank Allah. Secondly, the favors of those who have sacrificed regarding the deen for us in a way that today it came to us. We could have been sitting in a temple today. Do you know that? If it was not for the father of Allah upon us, 
Hidayah is in the hands of Allah. He guided our forefathers and he guided us to the goodness. Today, people could have not been seated here. May Allah protect us. We need to think about this to acknowledge the favor of people who took part in the battle of Badr. When we hear their names, do we say, radiyallahu anhum, they died for you and for me. Do you know that? They died so the deen came to us. They sacrificed so much, their lives, their time, the effort, the energy. They studied, they taught their children, they spread the deen as much as they could. Today we are seated here. It's important to acknowledge that favor. How do you recompense it? With evil? People are swearing today, Na'udhu Billah, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Astaghfirullah. And they call themselves Muslim? Wow! A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Allah protect our children from this evil scourge. Very bad. The minimum is, we say, Radiyallahu Anhum. May Allah be pleased with them. They sacrificed so much. This is how the deen came to us. We believe the best person to tread this earth after the prophets of Allah was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Yes. And we acknowledge the goodness and we acknowledge the sacrifice and we pray for them and we ask to be resurrected with them. This is it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. These are the people. Then you have the scholars and the others who came, you know, all the way down. Look at the four Imams, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, Al-Shafi'i, Rahimahumullah. May Allah's blessings be upon them. These people were the leaders of the Ummah. And through them, the deen came to us. What do we do? How do we react? How do we retaliate? What do we do in return? The minimum is we make dua for them. Rahimahumullah. That's the least you could say after a name. When you say, for example, Ash-Shafi'i, Rahmatullahi alayhi. May Allah's mercy be upon him. And on top of that, they were scholars who followed coming all the way down. Until you get to those in our midst. Today, in every society and community, Allah has kept certain people who, whose main cause is to serve the deen, to educate the people. To be an imam in the masjid, to ensure the adhan goes off on time, to make sure that everything is happening okay, to guide the people, to tell them what's right and wrong. Should we return that with evil, with a bad mouth, with a rumor that is spread? Is that what is goodness? Should we return it with a good word to say this man has sacrificed? This man, mashallah, he ensures this. This man has sacrificed in this way, that way. These are the ulama in our society. We go, we attend their talks, we attend the tafsir, the hadith, the ta'aleem, whatever else is there. We make sure we benefit as much as possible. Wallahi, if we benefit correctly, our children will be saved. Really. The problem today is we are far away. We might come for Jum'ah and for Eid. Subhanallah. And you see the masjid is packed. But what about the other salawat? Make a little effort. What about the little lessons that take place for a few minutes after the salawat? Do we take part? What about some other, you know, lessons that are arranged and organized? Whether it is, like I said, teaching from the Quran or Sunnah or Sahaba or Ta'aleem, whatever it is. Are we taking part in something? If the answer is no, this is why we have a reminder today. Make use of the ulama in your midst. Wallahi, if you don't do that, perhaps our children may head in another direction. May Allah protect us from this. So we recompense goodness with goodness. And as we come down, we will begin to notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us in so many different ways. We need to learn to pray for one another. Today, a difficulty is in this fast world, we do not know the people whom we attend the same masjid with. We are seated here today. I guarantee you, some of us do not know some others from amongst us. It's a fact. And this is why, make it our duty. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. You see, that's very important. As-salam. You know, one day I spoke about how the environment in a masjid should be. And one of the most important factors is never make the environment in the masjid such that someone feels like, I don't want to go there. Because when you say, As-salamu alaykum, how are you, my brother? So good to see you. Alhamdulillah, barakallah fiqh. Everyone feels good and they feel happy. There is a bond. The minute you say, brother, I'm coming to your business because I need a discount. Oh, the brother's going to say, no way, man. I shouldn't have come to the masjid. You see? So when we bring dunya into deen and we mix the two up in this way, you might chase people away from the house of Allah not knowing that because I want, to, I want a discount and I want a favor from this one and I want that one to be this and this one to be that, you know? And then I'm chasing people away. Brother, I need to attend the masjid and make sure that nobody is discouraged because of me. In fact, they must be encouraged. 
You know, sometimes you have people who have spent their lives in the clubs and drugging and perhaps, you know, they shave half their hair and leave the other half and so on. Someone somewhere is making dua for them. May Allah bless our children and protect them and bring them onto the path. One day, such a youngster might walk into the masjid. If everyone turns around looking at him as though, what are you doing here today? Is he going to come back? Question. So, just, we need to make him feel wanted. He's also a worshipper of Allah. Like we say, he is also a banda of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a worshipper of Allah. And he's walked in. Allah brought him here. He might turn out to be better than all of us. So, make him feel wanted. Ignore a few things. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, my brother? MashaAllah. So on and so forth. And make the man feel wanted. And thereafter, when he leaves, he will want to come back. If you don't see him for a few days, you don't need to say, oh, you know, you didn't come to the masjid. You say, brother, are you okay? Is everything fine? <coughs> Alhamdulillah. We're missing you. That's all. Good words. You don't need to say, I haven't seen you. You know, you're going to go to Jahannam if you don't come. The man came, Alhamdulillah. Make him feel wanted. This is how we should be recompensing goodness. Allah has given us the favor. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us in so many different ways. Now I'd like to spend a few moments speaking about what happens when we return goodness with goodness. And when we return goodness with something besides goodness. If you look at a good deed that is done to you as a favor and you return it with goodness. Say for example, I or yourselves, you have benefited me, I have benefited you, you have learned from the ulama. Even if you have read salah behind an imam in the masjid and so on, you have benefited from him. It's a good <coughs> deed that he's done, subhanallah. And you know what? Instead of just saying, no, it's his duty, he's getting paid. You need to understand. Minimum make dua for them. Every one of us has needs. We all have different issues. Those with children know the, the, you know, the duties. Those without children know the feeling. So we all need to understand. Make dua for one another. Ya Allah, bless this man. I have seen the power of dua. And I'm sure a lot of us have here. Of being made for a person you don't know and they don't know you. You only know they have this problem and you cry to Allah, Ya Allah, help this man. Wallahi, in no time you will hear that this person has been assisted. You just keep quiet. You don't need to say, you know, it happened because of me. No, it didn't. It's just a dua you made. Perhaps Allah will grant you goodness. But it's a genuine feeling. If the ummah has come up to that level, we are, alhamdulillah, heading in the right direction. But when we recompense good with evil, a man did good to you, you go around bad-mouthing him. You know what happens? It comes back to us to haunt us. It returns to us at some stage. So a few years down the line, you find, oh, my son did this. Why did he do this? Ya Allah, help me. I'm in trouble. I'm a problem. Ask yourself, did I ever mess my tongue about some pious saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or even just a mere human being who might have done good to me in the past? If that's the case, here I'm paying with my own children. Sometimes we suffer, whether it's our health, our wealth and so on. We don't know, it's because we deserve it. So now when you open the Quran, Allah says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Allahu Akbar. Whatever musibah and difficulty has come to you, you deserved it. That's what Allah says. It's because of your deeds. And you sit back and you say, Ya Allah, what deeds? Look back. You know when you phone an alim, for example, or call a scholar of Islam or a counselor of Islam and you tell him, no, I'm going through this, you know, my son, my daughter, myself, my parents, my brothers, my sisters, my business, whatever you complain about. They will tell you, no, it, inshallah, you know, it's a test from Allah, inshallah, it will elevate your status, you know, make sabr, have a bit of patience, forbearance, read dua, read salah, do this, do that, subhanallah. They will not be able to tell you, brother, you deserved it. Can someone tell you, no, man, you deserve it, salam alaykum, I'm going. But before it happens, we can tell you, when something happens to you, you need to first ask yourself, where did I go wrong? That's question number one. If you don't, you are being fooled. If something happens to you negative, evil, bad, it is definitely connected to some form of the power of Allah being shown to you in your life. Perhaps it may be a test for elevating you. But to ask yourself the question, where did I go wrong, is very healthy. You need to ask yourself. You might have harmed someone. Like the hadith says, Man aada li waliyan, faqad aadantuhu bil harb. Whoever has harmed a friend of mine, I announce war against such a person. You stand no chance. 
No chance. Allah is announcing, oh, so I rather keep quiet, make dua, read my salah, carry on. And Alhamdulillah, you know, I have protected myself from harming anyone. I don't know how close or far they are from Allah. And I'm minding my own business. And Alhamdulillah, at least tomorrow, I will lead a normal, happy life by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you show evil in the face of goodness, it is something that really we need to cry about. And this is why, my brothers and sisters, we always need to think before we do things. Think of the reaction of the action. There are so many ahadith and so many ayat in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, for example, in Surah Al Ahzab, He speaks about how those who harm, those who try and insult Allah and His Messenger will receive great punishment. And those who harm believing men and women for something they did not even do, Allah says, they have indeed burdened themselves with a great slander and a great sin which they shall pay for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So what's the way to come out of this? The way to come out of it is, we need to ask Allah's forgiveness. And we need to repent to Allah. Give good news to the person whose own weaknesses keeps him or her occupied from involving in the weaknesses of others. Remember this. This is the gift of Allah upon us. And one of the if you want to study any society, any community, and you want to see their level of success, you just need to see their relation with the religious personnel in that society and community. If you have relation with ulama that is very respectful and good, you find a successful society. The minute the ulama are considered as people who are just cheap by the way, the society flops. Because the dunya and this worldly materialistic life that we have is only a means. It is only temporary. What is permanent is your deed. What is going to help you forever and ever is your salah. I have come across top sportsmen of the world, top sports people of the world. And they are now telling you and me that we have found Allah and we've realized that this is the true path. And yet we are sitting here still kicking the ball and thinking that that is the true path. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. May Allah grant us goodness. So brothers and sisters, the point being made today, return goodness with goodness. If you cannot return goodness with goodness, then at least do not return it with harm. This is the thing. Sometimes someone does good to you. On the street, on the road, you find a person, they stopped, they helped you. They assisted you when you made an accident, for example. And sometimes you might not be able to pay them back. But the minimum is, you have not harmed them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May He open our doors. May He grant us goodness, inshallah. I know I've just said a few words. Like I say, it's motivation. It's one spoon, cough mixture, inshallah. Next time, inshallah, we'll be having more and more spoons delivered by your own ulama. Make sure you attend, make sure you benefit, make sure you assist the cause, make sure you are grateful, make sure you return goodness with goodness and not with evil. May Allah protect myself and yourselves until we meet again.